Hi guys and welcome to the CPC Podcast with me your host Alfonso Greenbrook. Today in pod 3 I'll be looking over the result over Watford and we'll be discussing the match, player rankings and my man of the match. So let's begin. And obviously I do apologise for posting this review um, a week late as I was on holiday and wasn't able to broadcast it. So let's begin. So, two goals from Troy Deeney extended the Eagles' winless run in the Premier League to nine games on another frustrating afternoon for the majority inside Sellers Park. Things had looked to be okay when Emmanuel Adebayor scored his first goal for the club on a stroke of half-time to cancel out Deeney's early penalty, but the striker completed his brace with eight minutes remaining to snatch victory for the visitors in the even affair. Johan Kabai smashed into the post in the final stages before Papa Suarez received a straight red card in injury time to compound Palace's misery. After a nondescript opening 15 minutes became a major flashpoint when the visitors won a corner which was delivered into the area by Ben Watson and Bobby Mowdley stunned Palace by awarding a penalty, judging Mila Jednak to have pushed down Dean inside the area. The striker brushed himself off and sent Wayne Hennessy the wrong way from 12 yards to open the scoring. Johan Kabai quickly responded with a blast from 25 yards that Gomez had to divert away. But once again, the match returned to its scrappy nature with neither side managing to find any rhythm or produce some in safe passing. On 36 minutes, it could have been 2-0 when another sloppy turnover of possession by the Eagles allowed... In Agarlo to tease his way into the area and get a shot which struck the base of Hennessy's post and bounced back out towards the danger area before the hosts were given a reprieve when another threatening, threatening attack was snuffed out by the linesman flag. The hitman then had another opportunity to add to his fine tally this season when Watson floated a free kick towards the edge of the box where Deeney delivered a flick on and found his striker's partner who had had a chance to lob Hennessy but could not keep his effort down. Just before half-time, the moment all those in red and blue wanted arrived, a long throw-in by Conor Wickham looked to have gone to nothing, but Yednak kept the ball in play and returned it to the striker, who put in a dangerous cross and was met by a fine looping header from Emmanuel Adebayor, which sailed over Gomez into the top corner of the net. That was the only real moment of quality in that half, which came just in time for the Eagles, but now he was off the mark. The Tonegalese striker was hungry for more and nearly got his second for the Eagles' career on 57 minutes when Wilfred Zaha tricked his way down the left and found Adebayor six yards out, but in strict gab t- stab toward goal- goalwards was saved by Gomez's feet. A minute later, the Brazilian keeper then had to fly, f- fly though, the air. Fly through the air, sorry, um, to push towards a stinger from Jordan March, which was arrowing towards the top corner. But Watford was still causing Palace scares, and Nathan Ack had a golden chance to put Kike Sanchez Flores's man men back in front. But when the ball came in at him at the back post, unmarked, his tame shot was straight at Hennessy. Back came the home side and Chung Ang Lee saw a free kick bundled away by Gomez before Damien Delaney headed over from the resulting corner. But with eight minutes to go, Deeney struck again. A throwing on the right came to Watson who crossed dangerously into the area and after the ball was invertedly flicked towards the back post, it fell to Hornets skipper in space who hammered it into the net to restore the advantage. Palace came close to getting a point from the game in the final minute of normal time when a corner reached Kabai 25 yards out from goal who swit it sweetly on the volley but saw it fud off the post with Gomez grasping thin air before Zaha pop blasted over the rebound. It looked to be over when Suarez was dismissed for a poor tackle on Valon Barin in the final seconds of the game when he saw the ball run away from him on a wet surface but in the final throws 
But in the final throw, Joe Ward had a good chance over the top, meaning the home side's winless start to 2016 continues. So there you have it. There was the match review. Now we're going to move on to the player rankings, which are courtesy of Reed Crystal Palace. So Wayne Hennessy at 6, the Welshman made some pretty good decent saves to keep Palace in the contest, but perhaps could have done better with the winner, although it was struck powerfully by Dini. Just waiting for it to load. Joe Ward at 6, the right back, put in another solid display. He looks to get forward on the right, but doesn't always look completely comfortable doing so. So I've just got to wait for it to load again. Damien Delaney, a five. Delaney was tasked with Mark Indini, and it's fair to say the Watford skipper got the better of the tussle. Obviously, these are quite short compared to my ones last week, but we're still go for it. Scott Dan at six. Dan was tasked with stopping Igalo, and despite a few shaky moments, he'd done his well, uh, job well, and obviously he's been quite consistent over the season, which we uh, hope he may continue. Now to move on to Papa Suarez, of course, sent off in the dire minutes of the game. The left back was sloppy in possession, although he was always willing to get up and run along the flank, which is quite good. He's quite a good attacking player as well as defensive. He was needlessly sent off in stoppage time for a poor challenge on Berahim and will now miss the next three games. And obviously, obviously, as I'm recording this after the Tottenham game, he's missed the first game, which was a Tottenham game. Now to move on to the next player ranking, which was Jordan Much. And actually, I'm surprised at him. He actually played really well considering he's come in, hasn't really played much. And he's been playing out wide, which I think has been working really well for him. But Jordan Much, a 7. Much started the game on the left and was neat and tidy, but didn't really get into the game. He moved to a central position at half time and looked much better. Obviously a pun there, Much. Um, it was a surprise to see him taken off after 7 um, 70 minutes or so and actually that was a, uh, a sort of a subject that was discussed on Twitter as many people weren't happy with the fact that he was taken off because Campbell was taken on for him. Now to move on to the next ranking and Mile Jednak a four and actually Jednak had a pretty bad game um, in my opinion but others may Disagree, and if you disagree with that, just put it in the comments below. But the skipper looked off the boil and gave away the penalty from grabbing Dini. And actually, looking back at the replay, he did dive. Even though Jednak was holding him, he did dive before Jednak fell. So, if you re look at that video again, actually, it shouldn't have been a penalty. But hey ho, perhaps that was in, perhaps that was in his head for the rest of the game, and he looked very uncomfortable. Kept miss passing the ball so not really what we expect of Yednak maybe time to leave and he's been linked with China surprisingly now to Johan Kabai of five which is quite surprising considering he's one of our better players Kabai is usually the mentor that mentor <laughs> sorry metron that keeps the palace side ticking over but he would nearly never really settled into the game some of his passes were uncharacteristically inaccurate which is quite surprising for Kabai considering he's been quite consistent over the season but now to move on to my man of the match who is Wilfred Zaha obviously he's been quite consistent during this hard time so Wilfred Zaha a seven Zaha always looked threatening and his pace was often too much for Watford to handle he'd be disappointed that he couldn't make a telling impact on the game and obviously he did play quite well and like I said he was my man of the match now to move on to Conor Wickham, who was playing up front with Adebayor in a 4-4-2 formation. And obviously he got a 6. So Wickham started the game back from his ban as part of a, a front 2 and he played pretty well. He played a, a major part in the first goal but was replaced at half time as Pardew made some tactical changes. Which some people disagreed with. But I can understand why he done it. And the... Uh, Final one from the starting lineup was Emmanuel Adebayor, who got a seven, obviously the goal scorer for Crystal Palace, scored a beautiful header and is obviously a class act. Still lacking a bit of sharpness, and obviously Pardew has revealed that he's almost up to match fitness, so that's good for us. But he can still get fully, he still has to get um, back fully fit. He'll be a huge addition to the Palace squad, so hopefully when he's back to full fitness, he will be the best he can be. Now to move on to sub 1, Lee Chung Young, a 6, came on for Wiccan at half time in a tactical uh, shape up, did quite well, he did qu do quite well obviously running up the left hand side wing, uh, was able to cut in very well, kept 
hold possession quite well, so good for him. Fraser Campbell, which is possibly the most talked about substitution on Twitter after the game. Many people did not like this substitution, but obviously here he got a five, which isn't that bad considering he only came on for sort of last 20 minutes, but he replaced much in the last 20 minutes as Palace searched for the winner, but he failed to see much of the ball. And to be honest, much was more involved in the game than Campbell was. And obviously he brought on another striker to get another goal. We should have kept much on to provide the ball to get, give it to Adebayor. Now, I, and now to move, and that was it. I was going to say move on to the other subs, but there were no subs for the game. So there you have it. That's my match review of Crystal Palace versus Watford. And that concludes my review, basically. So make sure to come back next week for my pre-match and post-match review of Crystal Palace versus Tottenham or Tottenham versus Crystal Palace, if you want to be pedantic. So thanks for watching and remember to up the palace.